Right, 14 March 2024, and as usual, I'm going to be giving you a very quick update on all the news happening in Zimbabwe, the military news, the business news, the political news, and the community news. And today I want to start with what has happened in the Zimbabwe National Army, and then I'm going to take it from there. I'm going to take you through uh, some of the important headlines. There's so much happening today. Today is the biggest news day in Zimbabwe. Thursday is the biggest news day in Zimbabwe. So I want to start with the military and then I'm going to move to other things. I'm going to move very, very quickly today. I'm not going to take time at all. So let's start with the military. And there are two major stories uh, that has happened in the military uh, because of the security situation around Idim Nangagba. As you know, last month, uh, in fact, earlier this month, there was an incident. And the changes that were happening already are intensifying. Uh, there has been changes in the command, especially around the Midlands province where Mnangagwa is home is. So they changed the commander there following the dismissal of the, fire, the, the Air Force uh, commander. So the, the general who was in charge of the Air Force was dismissed Elson Moyo here. He was dismissed and he was replaced by this general here. So this is, uh, let's look at this general. This is General M. Vice Marshal John Jacob Njede who replaced him. And yesterday there were more changes in the Zimbabwe military and I'll give you a bit of uh, context. There was also this change that happened last month uh, that is in Maswingo which I showed you. But today I'm going to show you a video. So I'm going to show you a video of what has happened. Uh, the changes in the military are being sparked by the security fears around ED. It's not clear uh, who is the threat. So there are three factions right now, uh, which I can pinpoint. That is uh, the guys who are currently in support of Mnangagwa. The guys that are coming. I always tell you about the guys who are coming. And then there are the guys who are disgruntled. For example, the guys from Zapu the old Zapu. There's a lot of disgruntled guys from the old Zapu. They feel targeted. Right now, as we speak, uh, I've spoken to quite a number of uh, former Zapu uh, who say they are very, very much feeling targeted. Sorry, I was just checking what that was. So let's look at the change that happened yesterday and also some of the changes that have happened uh, recently. So firstly, uh, July Moyo had to go and address the uh, the commanders in the Zimbabwe Defense University, those are the senior officials. These are politicians trying to convert the, um, the generals and the leadership in the army. This address by July Moyo is very strange. So I'll show you the, he was addressing on NGOs and INGOs. That is what he was addressing on. This is purely a political exercise uh, that July Moyo was conducting following Jen Fan Musuere, who went uh, last week. And remember the, the, the generals that I told you about, the new crop of leadership in the Zimbabwe National Army is very professional. They've been trained, they've got degrees, they've got PhDs, some of them have got masters. We are starting to see the professional group of leaders in the army. Very soon, politicians won't be able to touch them. But currently, because of the leadership, which is linked to the war veterans, there is a mixture of those that are still very political and those who are not political. So, Anna July Moy, they are going here on Mnangagwa's bidding or on Mnangagwa's side. They are trying to convert the, the military into their way of thinking. And these were the guys who attended here from the military. These are the guys who were listening to this address. You can see these are the professional guys sitting over there. It was not everyone. It was not all in sundry. Quite high-ranking officials sitting in this meeting. And I don't know what was being handed over here uh, to July Moy, but he just finished this exercise. I think the, the, this was a lecture, so the lecture on military. And then, so as I'm saying, remember, this is the context of security around Mangawa and the coming change. And as I always say, the coming change is not going to be uh, peaceful. So the, peace, the change that is coming in Zimbabwe in the next few years, the post Mnangagwa era, it's not going to be peaceful. One side is going to have to get dominance. And currently, you're seeing Nangakwa making efforts on his side and people on the other side making efforts. 
It's not Mnangagwa himself, but the infrastructure around Mnangagwa wants to stay. And the incoming infrastructure, the people that think they're coming in, they're creating their own infrastructure. Then there's what I call the third force. The third force is the people that think they can outsmart both sides. Those are the parties that are, are, are the third force operating in the shadows. And they want to come up uh, and behind the two sides. So they, eventually you have something different, a transitional kind of system that is going to come. And this transitional system, that is what is causing the, the problem. People don't understand who is who, who is on each side, who is as I said, Twenga will not be allowed to take over seamlessly or to just move in. He will have to fight to get into that position. So let's look at that in the context of the change that happened yesterday around Mnangagwa's uh, home, home province of Midlands. So they changed the command there, and I want to show you a video of the actual event. So let me read for you, uh, and I also want you to understand what has happened. Uh, the communication around military in Zimbabwe has been taken from the army. So the army is no longer communicating on behalf of, Zan of the army of, of self. ZANU-PF through ZANU-PF cyber team has taken over communication and the Ministry of Communication is not even communicating on behalf of the army. So this is handover and takeover ceremony of 5 Infantry Brigade as outgoing 5 Brigade Commander General S. Maseko hands over the command to Brigadier General M. Siziba. Zidane Commander General A. Senyat looks on as Brigadier 2 General signed the handover takeover proceedings. So this is very important, uh, what I'm showing you here. It shows you that the command of the army is no longer, and, and the communication for the army is no longer in the hands of people in the military. It's being done from outside. ZANU-PF cyber team is the real thing. It's not affecting the people who actually sit within ZANU-PF and they're doing these communications. They are people aligned to Nangagwa and the ZANU PF cyber team. But the guys in the military, the guys in the Ministry of Communications, they are not playing a role in these communications. Go to the Ministry of uh, Information right now, uh, Facebook or Twitter. You won't find it there. In the news, you are going to find it. You are going to find it on ZPC, but they'll put it right at the end. <laughs> we are going to, to not see it. So I'll show it to you now what happened yesterday and what the actual commander said during the handover. So just uh, give me a second to display that video so that you understand what the actual commander said uh, during the handover uh, proceedings. So a moment here while I find this video. Brigadier General Maseko leaves the 5 Infantry Brigade in the hands of Brigadier General Mpule Nsiziva, who takes over as commander of the Midlands based unit. Brigadier General Maseko leaves a legacy of dealing with the Mache wielding gangs in the mineral rich Midlands province as the chairperson of the Joint Operations Command. As 5 Infantry Brigade, we have seen operations in the southern border of Bait Bridge. As 5th Infantry Brigade, we have deployed in the northern border from Kariba to Nyamapang. As 5th Infantry Brigade, we have conducted a brigade administrative area exercise. We have controlled illegal gold mining activities in the Midlands province, and to some extent managed the machete yielding gangs as Joko. The incoming 5th Infantry Brigade Commander, Brigadier General Siziva, vowed to continue with the projects that were initiated by his predecessor for the good of the establishment. Say, I accept all the responsibilities that are associated with 5th Infantry Brigade. That includes the chairing of the provincial job and the security for both His Excellency since he resides here and the Commander Defense Forces residence. Commander Zimbabwe National Army, Lieutenant General Anselm Sanyatwe, who was the chief witness during the handover takeover ceremony, urged the military personnel to remain professional in the way they conduct their duties. I expect the formation to maintain the level of proficiency which has been the hallmark of 5 Infantry Brigade. Professional command and administration of the brigade is not worth element in building a disciplined army which would without any doubt, guarantees the nation's total security and stability. All right, so I hope you got a, a brief view of the proceedings, but I want to give you the bigger picture. So when you make wide-ranging changes on your military structure, 
there is usually a reason. And this cannot be explained to the civilians because it's probably of military significance or security significance. But the process that we're seeing now is very strange and I, had, I can explain to you. <laughs> so as I said to you, I can explain to you, the military cannot explain to you, but the military of Zimbabwe should be able to communicate what they are doing. Like the South African military, if you look at the South African military, they've got a Twitter. If you look at the Botswana military, they've got a Twitter. What they've done to the Zimbabwe military, they've taken away all their communication methods. So the military no longer has a Twitter. It no longer has a Facebook. It no longer has a uh, website. So communication has been taken from the military because the military is not trusted by ED and their people. So they've basically taken out the military in the communication and they've also taken away their weapons. So you must understand what is happening in the context of what I just said. The military is not trusted within ZANU-PF and the military is going through a transition of professionalism. So there's a lack of trust between the two parties, which is the military and ZANU-PF. ZANU-PF can no longer rely on the military as a structure to operate in unison. Uh, whenever they need to be protected. So Mnangagwa is going to have to resort either to some private arrangement or a component of the army. That is why there are some factions in the Zimbabwe military. And that is why there is an attempt to, militar to, to uh, politicize again the military of Zimbabwe. Yeah, this is, what you are seeing is a, an attempt to politicize the Zimbabwe military uh, through lectures. So these lectures that you are seeing is an attempt to uh, politicize them or to correct their thinking. The last time this was done, it was 2007 and it was done by General Chwenga. General Chwenga went around all the barracks politicizing the junior soldiers. So I'm going to show you uh, a research that was done by someone on that period when Changrai was beating Mugabe. What General Chwenga did. So I always tell you guys that uh, Chwenga is the strategic brains behind the Zimbabwe military. So I'll show you that report through an interview that was done with, uh, I think, about 10 soldiers who were in the barracks. So what you're seeing now is an attempt to politicize the senior soldiers, to correct their thinking, because they think that these senior soldiers who are professionalizing are not going to fall behind Mnangagwa in the time of need. And then obviously, as I said, the security of Mnangagwa is under threat, and you're going to see far-ranging changes. However, it also means that on Nangaba side, there is a strong side. It's not weak. So that's why I'm saying there are three factions. The one faction that is coming, the faction that belongs to Nangaba is going out, the third force, and the, San, the, the Sapu guys who feel disgruntled. So the Sapu guys feel disgruntled, and they feel that they are being targeted. So, for example, and, um, also, uh, they, they, they are the Sapu guys, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you may, you may correct me. And I've talked to some guys in Zambia. They wanted to come here and talk to me about uh, what they think is happening to the Zappo guys, but I've asked them not to do so because I prefer not to actually be directly involved in what is happening. So I do not want to... I've avoided it. I've avoided them coming here to give me an update on what they think is happening to the Zappo people in the army, in the Zimbabwe National Army. So the things I'm telling you here are real. They are not imaginary things. You are seeing a serious security threat on ED. You are seeing massive changes in the Zimbabwe military. You are seeing a deep platforming of the Zimbabwe military. They can't talk. They can't get their message out. They've removed the way of communicating. And the communication is now going through ZAPU, uh, sorry, through ZANPF platforms, which are owned by ED. So, and when I say ED, I mean his infrastructure, which was to stay. After he's gone, Nangaba is going to go. The third term issue is dead. Nangaba is never going to even breathe about the third term <laughs> after what happened last week. So I guess I need to wrap up this. I've been talking about this for a long time, 15 minutes. I normally don't want to talk about a long a topic like this for a long time because normally I would take an hour talking about this. I would lecture July Moyo first. I'll go and lecture July Moyo, then I lecture Jenfan. And then you can go and lecture the Zimbabwe military. Uh, Zimbabwe Defense University, because the security of our country is going to be very, very important going forward. Uh, the transition that is coming 
is going to depend heavily on what the military do, does. So you must watch the Zimbabwe military very, very closely. Because where, where we are going now, we are removing a military system of Mnangagwa. Mnangagwa is the last, is going to be the last military person. Probably the next person can be a military person. But the next one after that, so by 2030, you are going to have a civilian government Come going forward. You are going to slowly replace the military structure. The guys in the military are going to professionalize and go back to the barracks. The Zimbabwe military is going to become a regional force in military terms. But you will not see them in civilian affairs. So this is what has happened. And mark the, the, the events that are happening here as step one. Step two is coming, which is when you see a dead body. So the day you first you see your first dead body regarding this whole issue, that's your day one. So some people are going to die on this issue. And when that happens, you then know that you're on step two, when people start dying. And this is all going to play out in public. There's nothing that we're talking about that is going to happen in private. Because you've got two factions, a very, very strong factions. And no one is going to ascend to the position of Zimbabwe president without a bit of bloodshed or a lot of bloodshed. Something is going to happen because there are too many competing factions and there's no one who's got total control uh, as far as I'm concerned. The control is shared. So let's uh, let's wrap that up. I'll recap at the end and then if you've got questions, you can ask me in the questions, in the comment sections there. Um, I saw Mkomaongo MS is here. I hope you're doing well. Let's now go to um, the news. I want to go into the news. I won't read all the news. I'll just read the important news and some painful stories coming out of Jombe. I'm going to start there. Uh, the murder of young kids is becoming a menace and the police are doing nothing about it. Uh, yesterday, a, a young kid was killed, a uh, three-year-old, by a person that had been sent by a business person. I talked about this since Monday. And she's called Rumbi, this girl who sent this guy to kill someone. It's in the H Metro newspaper. This guy is called Steady Munda. The mother is on the right. Steady Munda is on is on the left. He was in a combi, uh, in, you know the combis, and it broke down at a river. As they were waiting for it to be fixed, Steady went into the neighborhood and killed a child. I think they wanted to take parts and threw the child in the in the river. The kids were well, that child went and supported the family, and he was apprehended. So he said the girl called Rumbi sent him to kill this child. A very sad, very unfortunate incident. It happened in the community. If that combi had left, they would have not found that this guy is the one who did it. So the murder of young children for ritual purposes is very bad because it involves sometimes people in the police service, like the one I showed you yesterday of uh, Tanyanyo. Uh, you, you should see that story yesterday. They are killing these kids. They are taking heads. I don't know what they're doing with them. And it's been happening, especially with the apostolic sects. It's connected to these guys in the apostolic sects. You saw that there was the issue of uh, Mazbaba Ishmael here and his crew. They were arrested yesterday. Mazbaba Ishmael is working with the police. And the police are refusing to take reports. Since 2020, I published the first story of the University of Zimbabwe professor who was killed or who died and was buried without being, the family being notified. And I was the first person to talk to the brother who published that story here. So I want to show you what the police, how the police is involved. And then I'll move on to the Shamisa tweet. So let's, let's look at this lady here. She went to the police. They are harassing her. This is my apostolic sex. And she went to talk to the police. And she was told that they will not attend to her. And I think there's guys called Disco in Harare. I would like them to respond to this old lady here. Indeed, <laughs> And the pro, 
Right, so I want you to understand the context of what I'm saying here. We, we are building our country. That's why you see us waking up every day. You and me and all the guys were here. And the police, the CID, the CIO, these guys are becoming part of the problem. President's office, they're criminals. These guys are not managing security in the country. They're not even managing traffic. I told you when I drive in Harare, I, I, I would drive from city of center to Harare at night on a Friday. It's the worst. There's no one controlling traffic. They, they take a Lex Lobster approach to, to security. So what is happening is the apostolic sects, the Nangas and the Sangomas, the Scott Sakupanyas, they are continuing with their behavior of killing people in broad daylight and nothing is happening. This issue of Mads Baba Ishmael, we reported it in 2020. In fact, 2019, he's been at that farm for almost five years. And every day, according to a report that was done yesterday by Tilda, if you go to Tilda's channel, Mustafa Ephraim, two children a day were dying at that farm. And Mads Baba Ishmael would just take the bodies and bury them on top of each other. So you probably find 600 bodies there of children and women. The one woman was buried with a child inside the stomach after she gave birth. They don't go to hospital. They marry off 8 year olds to each other and among themselves, among other things. And the police were told the Zimbabwe police is involved in all these things because they are part of the infrastructure and ED. When the ED goes to campaigns, the, poli the Mapostori are now working on when they give cars. They're giving them to these my stories and these are the people who are involved in these things and that old lady there has been terrorized a child lost an eye so you can go and look at it on uh, zim quick youtube channel that story these people are a menace and, and they are getting political protection to do all these things running cults there are so many cults around harare which do unthinkable things like, like keeping one these 1000 kids here on site so I think uh, this issue we've dealt with it. Let's see what happens to Mads Baba Ishmael. He's in jail today. Uh, he's he's going to be in court today, I think. Okay, so let's go to the Chamisa tweet and then quickly wrap up. Uh, a blow to the citizens project. The passing of Mr. Manyatera Wazadza is a huge sub subtraction to citizen power. He was a true citizen leader changing our political landscape. So you can go and look at this tweet on Chamisa's uh, Twitter. He is... Uh, talking about Manyatera, who who died. He was a big supporter of uh, <laughs> Chamisa. Very comic skit that he did. You can go and look at it on Chamisa's tweet. He's, he's got a video there. Then let's look at what Nangagwa has done. Nangagwa has welcomed four. Um, I think I'm missing one here. So I'm going to look for that one. So this is the ambassador. I think this is Uganda, uh, Philippines, and I think this is, what country is this? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is Vietnam, right? So I want to look for the guy from Mauritania, Mauritania. There's a, a guy from Mauritania here, I don't have him. I'm gonna give you the guy from Mauritania who went to hand over his credentials to Mnangagwa. So that's the guy from Mauritania there. So this is what happened with Mnangagwa. Let's look at what happened, what else happened. Chemist Siziva has died. If you go to Newswalks, they're tweeting about the death of Chemist Siziva. He died at perinatal hospital, and those are the pictures of Kemi Ziva here. A very prominent guy in, in, in the past in the telecommunications industry. We do Rana, Strive Masiwa, uh, and all that. Uh, the sad thing is that Kemi had to die at perinatal hospital for for a kidney element. So most CEOs in Zimbabwe are dying at perinatal. I went there uh, when my mother was very sick about I think a few years ago four years, five years. And that hospital has got no blood, it's got no facilities, the windows are broken. They're trying their best to clean, it was very clean, but it does not have facilities. And uh, there is no privacy, so they don't even have curtains. Could you one patient sleeping here. When someone is passing through the, the corridor, they see all the sick people, the young kids didn't have uh, incubators. It's a terrible situation at Paranato Hospital. And something needs to be done. I know the, the doctors are doing their best, the student doctors, and the dialysis place there was doing very well. The chemotherapy unit was doing very well. But for a CEO to die 
it it tells you what happens it's really terrible and i found the one of the ceos was having cancer there i met him in the cancer unit one of the big banks the only place you can go when you get sick is Paranya. So if you're in Zimbabwe, you must think very carefully about the situation here. Uh, you end up suffering. Before you die, <laughs> you, you'll be in this situation, uh, watching uh, this situation that we is developing in Zimbabwe. It, you don't just watch. Participate. Because it's going to affect you in person. Uh, you, you, you think that, ah, what is happening in Zimbabwe will never affect me. It will affect you as a person. And it's all the mismanagement, the corruption, and the new people that we have now, the, the young people that we have, they have to take a step in protecting our country. Then Mapurisa, as usual, corrupt to the core. So these three police people, you are seeing them here, they're going to court yesterday. They are Asma Winston, uh, Muzoriwa, and Persevere Chisango. They went to the Quest Financial Services robbery where money was stolen, 700,000. And they took, the, the security guards were arrested yesterday. I showed you the security guards. They went and then took, the security guards stole 53,000. And then these guys, these police guys went and they stole 22,000 from the security guards and let them go. That's what happened there. So it was like thieves stealing from thieves. And uh, I think the cameras caught them doing it. So they've been arrested. So three police officers appeared in court yesterday for that quest financial services, the biggest robber in Zimbabwe, 700,000 US dollars cash stolen. And the police here uh, are some of the thieves who stole afterwards. So there were, there were many thefts that took place. Three robberies. So a robbery within a robbery took place there. Now, I don't know what to do about 26 minutes. So which means I can still go another four minutes without becoming so long. Uh, I understand that there's a young lady called Rumbi, right? I want to tell you about Rumbi and since I, I watch Rumbi a lot, so you guys should watch it. But I don't watch it to the end because she spends like um, how many hours? I think sometimes I've seen it do two hours. So tell Rumbi to call me uh, if you know him. Then <laughs> maybe I can give it the rest of the hours for you guys to talk to her. Uh, let's go to, actually I like her stuff, but I'm saying like I can't do so long because from here I need to go to gym, I need to go run, I need to go and... Um, uh, I don't have the, the time to do it. So let's look at the newspapers quickly before I go to my brothers. I know my brothers are waiting for me to look at the comments. So I want us to look at the Herald newspaper. I saw the Herald newspaper is here. Very quickly and see if there's a story there. Then we can quickly wrap up. Uh, newspapers today are packed with stories. And I want you guys to understand what is happening. What is happening is that we're in the post Munangagwa era, no one takes Munangagwa seriously anymore. Like in government, no one is planning Kuti Nangaba Chazoita Kuti Zunzi Fambi or we are going to get something from Nangaba. Everyone is not planning Kuti. When Nangaba goes, what do we do? Because ED is going to plan as we speak. He was with Java yesterday and his son. Those are the kind of skits that you are going to see from Nangaba, Maskit. So let's look at this one. Zim's rich pickings charm US investors. I don't know what they're talking about here. I didn't have time. You can go and look at these stories. It looks important to me. Uh, U.S. investors can now come and invest in Zimbabwe because the sanctions are only on Munangagwa. They are not on the Zimbabwe, whole Zimbabwe. Then Chuenga opened the tobacco auction floors. I'm going to ask the guys to put the video for you, the full video of Chuenga talking. Uh, he was talking a lot about exporting and all that. I didn't have time to finish uh, all this. And then there was this view of the airport. This is Felix Mona. He went with uh, Joshua Sacco. Tourism and hospitality industry, Barbara Rodzi. Barbara Rodzi, she's not touching my calls. Like, I don't know what's happening with Barbara. <laughs> when I tried to WhatsApp Barbara, she doesn't pick. I guess because uh, uh, of what happened with um, that violence in um, in Mashingo. Remember that corporate run. Then, Bright Out, Fizival, Japreza, that is in, in business, in sports. And we've got Kamabila meeting with Mnangawa here with Magaya. So come on, be like, be careful. These guys are going to destroy your career. Anyone who stays next to to ED, their political, their playing career is over. You, see, you know what happened to the other guy? He was so injured for so long. Kutamba uh, Kama, Kutamba I know Kama, why you have to do this? It's because you are struggling. So I want to think that we have looked at this uh, newspaper. U.S. best Zim Youth seek local collaboration. 
So US-based Zimbabwean youth have launched a non-profit organization known as Anot Inc. Dedicated to fostering collaboration between young people and entrepreneurs in the United States of Africa, states in Africa. So Anot, Anot, call me if you want to collaborate. I've got a plan. So if you want to collaborate, Anot, call me. Now let's quickly look at um, Chronicle newspaper. Chronicle is my favorite newspaper. The guy was there. I don't know if they've changed him. He is the guy who used to go on the uh, on the ground a lot. So let's look at Chronicle newspaper. This is the last newspaper I'm going to look at. And then I'm going to move from here uh, to other things. So he's talking here about traditional grains defy uh, drought. So I'm going to ask Kundaichi Tima to come here. I've had a chat with him so that he can be talking to you about uh, crops, farming. You can go to Kundaichi Tima. He's one of the guys. The first guy to work at Gambako Media was Zico and Kundaichi Tima. Uh, besides Anamko JC TV, you can look at these guys. The newspaper is surprisingly small. Uh, the, the Chronicle newspaper, I don't know what has happened there. So the news we have here is the Lady Chevron Land African God. They beat South Africa. So the Lady Chevron uh, uh, Cricket, uh, they beat Zimbabwe in South Africa. They, they Zimbabwe end up as the winner here. So you can go and look at that story. It's all over the internet. They're obviously showing a picture of Magaya and uh, and Nangaba and Kamabilet. So that is the stories we have in the newspaper. I apologize because normally I want to show you the news that is happening and less analysis. But this story of the military is so important that we're eventually going to deal with it. And look at what's happening now. You, me, and all the guys who are there. If we don't take control of this situation, uh, you know what I call the moment of truth, the moment when things are very difficult. That is when you see if someone is a leader. If you see during, I know most of you guys are here are MBAs and PhDs. The most important success factor in organization is management. But in Zimbabwe, the most success, uh, important success factor is the citizens. The citizens are sitting back. Everyone is waiting for Chamisa. I always tell you this, don't wait for Chamisa. Make this thing happen. The reason why all our things in Zimbabwe are not working is because the citizens are dosa. They sit back and they want someone else to do it. So the current situation that we have is a collapse of the Mnangagwa government, total collapse. There's nothing working in the Mnangagwa government, except the military guys, who are now our last line of defense. If the military falls, then you can see that nothing is going to ever work again. Zimbabwe is going to be the biggest Haiti of all <laughs> history. Like, you know what's happened in Haiti? Like where President just got told uh, today, Guti, tomorrow be out and he's out. I, I think most of you know what's happening in Haiti there. Now let's look at the comments. Mkoma uh, Sinoy says, PG, PG, my wife and I enjoy listening to you. Great analysis, great political work. It's always great to be an adulterated and biased news in the world where there's a lot of bias. Thank you very much Mkoma and I'll keep doing this as long as I can. Uh, and I hope that everything works. Then Mkoma Emma says, who told you that Chiwenga wants to take over from ED? Okay, Mkoma MSC, ask a good question. Chiwenga is next in line to take over from ED. He is preparing himself to take over from ED. And there's no question about it. However, ED's infrastructure will not allow Chiwenga to take over. So I, I just want to repeat this. But both Chiwenga and ED, they are going to be surprised by a third force. So understand what I say every time. A third force is going to address to surprise both ED and, and Chuenga, if they're not careful, and we end up with a transitional system. That is what I believe is happening. And that's why you see all these changes that are taking place. Then let's look at another comment very quickly before I go. Um, Koma Samuel says, Yes, the murder of children, especially. This police, they, they need to do something. If, if I was the head of police today, I'll go to Dispro. I'll find that old lady. I'll ask her who she's been talking to. I will close down all those my postory. I'll go and find witness and arrest him and throw him in jail. I'll go and find Scott, arrest him and throw him in jail. I'll go and close his pen along a plant. <laughs> so you see, and then you, you see that now you've started. I, I, as I said, I've got a story which if I tell you about E.D. and Scott, it's gonna be a chaos. This thing, I'm just waiting for details. 
of, of what these guys are doing. And I think the guys at um, one of the in, state-owned enterprises, they know what I'm talking about. So we, we want to make sure that we deal with what's happening in Zimbabwe. It's a mess. There's total collapse of law and order. And there's a total collapse because people in the president's office are involved in crime. Whereas they're supposed to be addressing the crime. So that's why you see the military guys are not happy at all. There is a problem there. Uh, and then Mukoma uh, says, please update us on the story of Zimbabwe who opened a country two months ago. That's a, a fake, that's a fake thing. Uh, I've been following him. He's not opening any country. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, and th that thing, uh, Webstone, I, I don't subscribe to it at all. It's nothing. It's a nothing. So that is what I have to say about Webstone and his country. So Webstone Jokoy. So I, I think we've covered this and I really appreciate all your attention here. We publish every day many multiple videos, short updates through the robots and through our news readers. Please go there and have a look. But to recap, there are massive changes in the Zimbabwe military. These changes are around Nangaba security because there is a threat on Nangaba which people in the system don't understand. There are three factions right now in the army, which is the army, uh, the, uh, the faction aligned to Mnangawa, the faction aligned to Chuenga, the disgruntled guys from Zapu, and the third force. In fact, so there are four factions right now in the army. And any of those factions can become a, a game changer going forward. So that is what I, I said here in the beginning. And there was that appointment. So what I want to do is I want to play for the guys who didn't see this. I want to play for them the video of uh, the changes in Gweru, where they've changed the command so that Mnangawa's security is tightened. So I'll play this, and this is what we're going out with. Brigadier General Maseko leaves the 5th Infantry Brigade in the hands of Brigadier General Mpule Nsiziba, who takes over as commander of the Midlands Best Unit. Brigadier General Maseko leaves a legacy of dealing with the mache wielding gangs in the mineral-rich Midlands province as the chairperson of the Joint Operations Command. As 5th Infantry Brigade, we have seen operations in the southern border of Bay Bridge. As 5th Infantry Brigade, we have deployed in the northern border from Kariba to Nyamapangi. As 5th Infantry Brigade, we have conducted a brigade administrative area exercise. We have controlled illegal gold mining activities in the Midlands province and to some extent managed the market yielding gangs as JOK. The incoming 5th Infantry Brigade Commander, Brigadier General Siziva, vowed to continue with the projects that were initiated by his predecessor for the good of the establishment. Say, I accept all the responsibilities that are associated with 5th Infantry Brigade. That includes the chairing of the provincial job and the security for both His Excellency since he resides here and the Commander Defense Forces residence. Commander Zimbabwe National Army, Lieutenant General Anselm Sanyatwe, who was the chief witness during the handover takeover ceremony, urged military personnel to remain professional in the way they conduct their duties. I expect the formation to maintain the level of proficiency which has been the hallmark of five infantry brigade. Professional command and administration of the brigade is not worth element in building a disciplined army which would without any doubt guarantees the nation's total security and stability. Right, so besides what is happening with the changes of the command at the middle level and lower level, the army has been deplatformed. So the Zimbabwe military is no longer in charge of their communications. It's being communicated through ZANU-PIO, ZANU-PIO cyber team. Even the Minister of Information is not involved in the communication. And there's an attempt to politicize the military generals or the, the generals. So these guys were listening here. There's an attempt to politicize them through speeches and lectures. So yesterday the lecture was conducted by July Moyo here. As you can see, that was the lecture by July Moyo here. So all this, I hope has given you a better understanding of what's happening in the Zimbabwe military. I continue to give you updates as it happens. But we are in a transitional period. We are in a post Mnangagwa era. And what's coming is not going to be a, a smooth transition. It's not going to be a peaceful transition. You are going to see one or two dead bodies very, very soon. And the day you see those dead bodies, we're now in phase, phase two. Right now we're in phase one, where everyone is operating from the shadows. But the key players we have to emerge 
and with the image that's when you're going to see your first bodies so thank you very much everyone for watching and a good day to you all